Welcome, and thank you for joining for another Whiskey Review. Today, we're going to take a look at the Spring Bank 12, Batch 23. The Michael Jordan of the 12 cast strengths, Dustin. Apparently. This time coming in at 55.9% ABV, and Dustin, an odd all-bourbon release. The first, uh, as far as I know. Uh, for the Spring Bank, tw- uh, Spring Bank 12. Uh, but pretty dark even for uh, bourbon. I-, I was saying that obviously this is in a sherry cast one, so it's not super dark. But if it's all bourbon, yeah, that's a fairly dark whiskey. All right, let's get into it. Um, picked this up here recently. What Probably had it, what, three weeks? It's been pretty short uh, time when the- that I've had this one. Uh, Spring Bank, we just got another kind of round here. We got lucky uh, with the... 12 and the 18, they came in kind of early for uh, Kentucky, so I got a hold of uh, those. Still crossing my fingers and hoping that Hazelburn 13 shows up, but I'm guessing I'm going to miss out. We do what we can. Yeah. We do what we can. Nice light gold color. Yeah. After spending 12 years in oak, aging at the Springbank Distillery, Dustin. Beautiful. Yeah, and those Dunnage warehouses. Mm, let's get to it. Boy, I tell you what, the funkiness is easy to pick up. With yeah. no sherry cast maturation in it. Well, you know, there's a funk that I get from the sherry cast sometimes that's mm-hmm. not here. But, man, yeah, you get the classic Campbelltown. Mm-hmm. Also getting a little bit of barnyard, like hay kind of note. Yeah, there's almost like a farmhouse type yeah. element to it as well. And if you ever like are into like some of like the uh, Belgian beers, and you ever have some of those like farmhouse ales, there's a little bit of a note that kind of reminds me of that like open uh, Brettermyces uh, note. And then, you know, that bourbon cast, you get a little bit of that... that Nice vanilla. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little twinge of honey. You definitely can pick up the peat on this one more than I can on most 12 because the bourbon cask isn't yep. hiding it at all. It's actually mm-hmm. maybe even enhancing it. Everything's laid bare. Yeah. And, but, you know, it's not as sweet as I thought it might be at first because it's not that super, like, first fill, heavy vanilla. I don't think they used a lot of first fill bourbon, if any. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, not on the nose anyway. Yeah. But yeah, very much it's laid bare with this particular one. And I would say, yeah, it's probably a second fill bourbon. Mm-hmm. Maybe I had high, high char on it. Because I think maybe some of that little bit of a smoke note feels like a char note to me. I could, could be wrong. Could be. I mean, again, I think what they've done here, though, is really well. They wanted to really show off their Springbank malt here. I think that. For I think sure. Somebody got a couple casks and said, oh, this is a really good example of our malt. It's, Nothing offensive here. For, it, you know, if you like spring bank. <laughs> yeah. Again, I, I was almost going to use the phrase, it smells clean. And it isn't clean because it's spring bank, but it's a very straightforward spring bank. Yeah. I mean, again, there's nothing hiding the malt from you, but there's also not that, like, sour still note. There's not, like, really tired cats where, you know, you're kind of going, ooh. Yeah, the, the sugar cookie thing has never been more prevalent on the whiskey, I don't think. Yeah, it's, it's right here. There's also a citrus note that's coming in here that I'm Slight, struggling right. a little bit with what exactly to call it, but there is an, a citrusy element here. Yeah, just a almost like a little bit of a dirty lime. Yeah, I mean it's, it's almost like just if you were to like have somebody give you citrus extract and they just called it citrus extract, whatever that is, that's what I'm smelling. You know, <clears throat> it's lime on the ground in an amusement park in the sun. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I was almost thinking like lemon concentrate, but not as lemony. That makes sense. You live in Cincinnati. You you know what Kings Island is. Yeah. Go stand in line <laughs> in August. <laughs> I haven't been there in a long time. <laughs> Never mind. All right, I'm going to go for it. Yeah, go for it, man. Yeah, no, I mean, again, just all in all, guys, really nice smelling. If you are a bourbon cask uh, aficionado, that's really what your, your wheelhouse is. I think, at least on the nose, you're going to be very impressed with this particular whiskey. Because it really is what you want in that milieu. Ooh, that's really sweet when you first swallow. But initially on the palate, a lot of that mm-hmm. sugar dough cookie. A lot of funkiness initially on the palate. And then as soon as you swallow, bang, ton of sweetness. Vanilla rushing down now down the sides of my cheeks. Almost like chocolate would in a normal situation with a sherry cast whiskey. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that almost comes off in the finish like it would be a first fill. Mm-hmm. Bourbon cast. There's a lot of vanilla in that. Hmm. Dirty vanilla. I'm getting a lot more like pineapple on the finish, to be honest with you. Oh, you think that's a citrus note? Um, up front, no. The finish, yes. <laughs> that's the weird thing. Because up front, it's <clears throat> the most peated spring bank I can remember. No, oh, it, it's all there. Like, this actually drinks to me more peaty than some of those long rows do. Although I've never said 
long row and super peated? Well, you say peat. I mean, I focused on, you're right, it is. I focused on the sh- the sugar in the cookies. In, in they're there, no, too. You're right. But, but dough's there. And it's super salty, too. This is a really, again, a very salty. Yes, it is. But then it gets like this almost, I want to call it like, it's almost like a dreamsicle note comes in there, like in the middle area where it's a little bit of orange, a little bit of like vanilla you're, you're talking about. You're right. There is a, a twinge of orange in there. And then when the finish really gets going, that's when it switches to that like pineapple citrus, which I get on like really nice spring bank bourbon casks. All really good notes. You're right. It's not a lemon on the ground. It's an orange on the ground. Oh, the orange is coming out even more now. Thanks for helping me out with that. But yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, it was, it was the vanilla and that note, and I was like, oh my god, this is like a little bit of a dream sickle. I mean, it's not mm-hmm. a, it's a little more bitter than your normal dream sickle, but... <laughs> that uh, dream sickle might, all, might also be on the ground and <laughs> yeah. melting. Yeah, there's some sand by the... <laughs> so it's not the best day. <laughs> a little, little seawater sea got touched it. <laughs> yeah, this is the end. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, very interesting for a twelve. Um, yeah. you know, th- I I can't really compare it to any of the other ones. I no, mean, it's really I, that different. You know, and I never got to try the bourbon. What they did, I have an old uh, single barrel um, refilled bourbon that mm. I can't compare to this. The closest whiskey I have to this is honestly, I've got a single cask Hazelburn eleven year ex bourbon that we need to review at some point because I've gotten dangerously close to killing that one. I think. <laughs> God, it's a good one. You don't, twist, you don't twist around and drink. I know. Uh, we'll have to bring that one up to you guys. Just bring it. But it reminds me a lot of that, you know, kind of pineapple note, mm-hmm. that citrusiness on the finish. Like, has a really good transition from, like, sweet malt up front to, like, but he, big, bold finish. I'm telling you, I have not gotten to the point where I thought pineapple, though. I, I can go so far as to say orange, but it, it feels on the, sharp. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the finishing, the citrus. Mm. It's the where you get the oak and the citrus on the finish. All right, one more time. Yeah. And, you know, I might be using the wrong word. Uh, pineapple is not something I go to a lot. And it's not – it's like the it's like the sourness of a pineapple. It's not the sweetness up front. Mm-hmm. It's the sour piece. Like now is when you should probably be tasting it. Yeah. Actually, it was a little bit quicker than that. But you're right. It was a twinge of sour and something yeah. acidic. It goes way quick, though. It, 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 it doesn't linger, but it's yeah. like it, when it hits there, it's really, really nice. And mm-hmm. to me, that's something I only get on really nice ex bourbon casks, and I generally get it on these like cast drink, yeah. I mean, barrels you might, be, might be pineapple. You can see, see a lemon or something. Anyway, um, <laughs> no, I mean, I, I would say it's a little bit more noticeable when you yeah. put water. I, on I say it. pineapple because I think a pineapple is less descriptive, really, because sure. it's got less like it, it. The citrus is more dominant relative to the flavor of the fruit. Agreed. If that makes sense, the no, sweetness agreed. of the fruit. Agreed. Same thing with an orange. A lot of times. Well, the, the, I mean, the orange smell well, from five miles away. You're like, whoa, it's an orange. Yeah, you're probably right. Mm. Overall, though, interesting take on the 12 year. Mm-hmm. Rather than just doing the same thing over again. Yeah, I actually. I appreciate it. You know, I'm not the biggest bourbon cask fan there is. I really think Spring Bank 12 is best when it's heavy sherry. Mm-hmm. But this is a really nice change of pace. Really sure. good. There's absolutely nothing. If you're a Spring Bank fan, this is a buy. Yeah, this is... Instant buy. Yeah, th- yeah for sure. Um, this, to me, now, will once when I have the 12s, this will be kind of a benchmark as far as how much bourbon influence is compared mm-hmm. to sherry. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because we have plenty of examples of a heavily sherried influence one. I don't care if it's local barley, 12, 18, yeah, or right. what it is. Um, it's nice to really have a, a, the counterweight or the other bookend, mm-hmm. you know, especially with something that we have so many of, which is these cast drink 12s. Yeah. Yeah, great whiskey, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah as oh, yeah. usual. This is a tough one to score. Yeah, interesting. I really like it, but overall whiskey score, 87. I'm right there with you, 87. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, 87 is a high score. I thought about an 88, but, uh, you know, and maybe, if you, again, if you're a bourbon cast guy, you might even go 89 on this one. But Maybe. You have to really be a bourbon cast guy, and I think you lose a little of the depth and extra complexity when, of having different casks in there. Yeah, well, you do for sure, but it's nice to see it in this light, or it, yeah. I, I would say in broad daylight. You know what I mean? Like this is oh, really. I'm so happy they did it. And yeah, again, I mean, again, sure. 87 is a good score. I might even buy a backup bottle. Of this we'll see what happens. I'm gonna tomorrow. I'm gonna go to the store and see what I can buy. Let me put it a different way. If I had the choice between this and say, like, I don't know, 2019, 2018, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I would want an extra bottle of this just because I know it was a different take on it. Yeah, it's a very interesting version of the 12. Overall whiskey score, I'm at an 87. Mm-hmm. But it is still something, if you collect Spring Bank 12, 
cash drinks. This is a unique and therefore or if a special. If you're just a bottle. regular Springbank, you know, twelve cast drink fan, I'd pick a couple of these up if yeah, you can. Sure. Mm-hmm. Now I know it's going to be hard for a lot of you to do that, but if you do have the opportunity, pick up two of these. Yes, I at least think two. it's going to be one of those that you're going to be really glad to have down the road when you want to go back and compare. Oh, it won't be anything like this. Like I said, it'll be a bookend for the heavily sherried one and, and yeah. everything in between. But you got to have the bookends. Yeah. Got the bookings. You know, got those two. And yeah, we'll see if the they do a 12, 100% sherry, but uh, upcoming up, I think the mm-hmm. most they've done is 80, 20. Mm. No, they've done 75. Hey, 25. but just anyway. like just like with this year's version of the 18, it isn't the percentage of sherry. It's what sherry you're putting in those things. Yeah. That's, that's a bigger deal. Anyway, those are our thoughts on the whiskey. Me and Dustin are in lockstep on this particular one. Um, interesting. Good one. It's like yeah. the 12. It's worth your time for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you guys had a chance to try this one, let us let me know what you think. And then Dustin, until next time, what do you wish the folks? Happy drinking. We'll see you then.